G'day guys, how's it going? This is broadcasting because yes, my computer is fixed and yes, we are back with another episode of Port's Path to Power in AFL Live 2. Now guys, we left on a bit of a cliffhanger in the last episode with Brett Ebert's suspension hanging on four matches. The consensus for you guys was to appeal and look how well that turned out. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys. So nevertheless, uh, Brad Ebert will be out for the next five matches, which is a bit of a kick in the nuts to be honest because he's been one of our best players throughout the season so far. I decided to have a look around at some of these training options, which I really haven't touched to this point because I don't really know how it all works. But I decided we'd chuck them all in some skill-based training and see how that turns out. No, Not too many major changes to these guys' stats, but I can imagine if we do it on a consistent basis, then hopefully they'll be able to pick up on uh, skills and stuff. So, yeah. So, nevertheless, our first game of this episode coming up against the Adelaide Crows in our first derby of the season, of the home and away season anyway. And, well... We all know what happened last time. So with that thumping from the NAB Cup still fresh in our minds, the first priority we had for this game was to make sure that we got on the scoreboard. Well, thanks to an early goal from 50 Shades of Robbie Gray, we were able to do exactly that as he thumped the ball long to kick the first goal of the game and put a seven points up very, very early days in the first term. But Adelaide were more than happy to come to the party with their newest recruit, James Podziali, or one of several new recruits actually, particularly to bolster their forward line, playing around guys like Taylor Walker and the Porpoise. It was Podziali to kick their first goal in reply, tit for tat early days. And that is much of the way that it stayed, to be honest, throughout that first term. We were able to kick a couple of late goals. This long bomb from Kane Corns from outside 50, an absolute cracker. And then a late one to James Podziadley to keep them within reach for the second quarter. It was tit for tat for more on this point, but we were able to sustain about a 13 to 14 point lead for most of the first half. And we're more than happy with that going into the break. It's 6 3 39 to the power to just the three straight 18 for the Crows. Of the two teams, we definitely went into the halftime break better, not just with the lead, but with all the momentum, which spilled over into that second half. Andrew, gimme, gimme more, gimme more, gimme more, kicks the first goal of the third quarter to stretch the lead to a monstrous 27, well, it's not quite monstrous, I guess, but it's big enough, a 27-point lead. And although Adelaide were able to keep within a couple of goals of us, they never really looked like breaking that lead beneath about 15 to 20 points. They got within reach later towards the end of the game with 16 points the margin at three-quarter time, but it was not going to be enough and a couple of late goals to finish off. This cracker as well from a tight angle from Chad Wingard was just about enough to seal the game for us. We take a look at it on the replay. It stretched our lead out to 22 points with just three minutes to play in the game and that was more than enough to seal the win for the power. In the first home and away derby of this career mode, we were able to take the spoil a consolation to the Crows, but it didn't mean too much in the end because we were able to run out winners. 9-9-63, the final score to 6-1-37 to the Crows. Schultz, Monfries and Loby all amongst the touches along with a couple of the other blokes as well. So back in the office and... Oh no. Oh no. Here we go again. Struth, we go to the treatment booth and... Oliver Wines. Oh, come on. Please don't let's... 12 weeks. 12 weeks weak injury to Oliver Wines. He hasn't been as the most influential player, sure, but... Oh, come on! So with one of our most promising young players on the sideline, we come up against Gary Ablett FC in what should be a routine victory, but mind you, up at Metricon Stadium, very little is routine. So as we sat back and watched the Suns kick the first few goals in this game, we conceded that we weren't quite off to the best start. In fact, our defending and even our midfield was so bad that we couldn't even get a shot on goal throughout the entire first term. By the end of the first quarter, we found ourselves 26 points to nil, and yes, we were the nil. So you could say that things are not looking too good. In fact, they were looking bad. Very very bad. But just when we reach the bottom of the barrel, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel. The Hoff of the West variety is there to kick our first goal to bring us within 20 points. And within a matter of minutes, we were back to within a margin of just 14. But things did not get better from there. Danny Stanley, that's right, the reject from Collingwood, kicked four goals in the first half to put us right back in our place. I decided to swap Carlisle with Homs in a desperate attempt to stem the flow of Danny Stanley's goals. But to be perfectly honest, it did bugger all and the goals kept on coming. 
I've started to notice a bit of a trend with this team that is turning out to be quite a concern. While we're able to compete with pretty much any team that comes to play us in Amy Stadium for all of our home games, we just can't take that form away with us. I understand it's very difficult playing away from home, but we've got to find a way to bring it within ourselves to back up these sort of performances because we can't do that in the finals and we are going to have to be able to play on the big stages interstate if we're going to stand any hope of pushing for the top eight, let alone for the top four. Unfortunately, there was no turnaround for this one, guys, and that score in the top left-hand corner is the way that it stayed when the siren went. The final score, Gold Coast 9-357 at home, a 37-point thumping of our power at 3-2. 20. 57 to 20 the final score. Some of the stats are flashing up on your screen at the moment. Dominic Assisi in a very successful return to the side following his injury with nine touches. A game high for the power along with some of the other guys. Another good game with Hamish Hartlett's tackling right up there in double digits at seven with some help from Corns and Thomas as well. Danny Stanley finished with the four goals he had from the first half and added only two behinds. For the rest of the game. Well guys it is that time when we check out which of our first team players will go out injured this week and this time it's our one and only Ruckman in Matthew Loby. So he's going to take some replacing out for nine weeks he is after I put him into the physio uh, and we will have to have a look around and some reshuffling is in order to see who will step up and fill his boots for the upcoming two months. Well, guys, we take a look at the latter four rounds into the AFL season. A couple of teams have already played in round five, and Collingwood is on top of all teams. Uh, at least they lost a game, so that's not too bad. Hawthorne up one by one game behind them, actually, so they are still yet to play. Gold Coast settling in at third. A couple of the other surprise packages up there as well. GWS at sixth, and Adelaide just above us at 7th. We're settling, settling in very nicely at 8th position above the Bulldogs and Geelong on percentage. So guys, that is a look at the ladder this far into the season. And now it's time to take a look at the player and goal of the episode. Today's player of the episode is by no means a sympathy vote because I've decided to go with Matthew Loby. He was the most consistent of all of our guys across the two matches, racking up 22 hitouts for the two games as well as contributing with four touches in each match, kicking a goal and also getting just over half a dozen tackles with eight. So that is a fantastic effort despite being injured. No doubt he will be very sorely missed. Well guys, for the goal of the episode this time around, we have to go back to the first goal of the episode. After shrugging off an opponent and leaving three defenders in his wake, 50 shades of Robbie Gray slots the ball just on the right hand side of the Toyota padding to kick our goal of the episode. We get a good look at it here, shrugs off his man, leaves them all behind, has time to size it up and leave him in his wake and that was that. So guys, that is the goal of the episode and with that, we finish episode number five of Ports Path to Power. I hope you have enjoyed this episode, guys. If you have, be sure to mash that like button and hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more. Subscribing to me is like giving me a virtual high five and everyone loves high fives. My computer's back up and running more or less now, so hopefully the next episode will be just around the corner. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Cheers and stay tuned.